Hello and welcome to a short video on nonparametric spectral analysis. Specifically, this video focuses on how we can interpret a windowed Fourier transform as the output of a filter bank. So let's get started. So a windowed Fourier transform is like I've defined here. I'm calling the output of that transform xw of e to the j omega k. Omega k is the frequency we're evaluating the transform at. And we compute that by simply multiplying the time signal, x of n, that we want to take the transform of by a window, and then just taking a standard um, discrete time Fourier transform. The window is a finite length window, um, so we're calling it an endpoint window here. So this is an endpoint long window, and um, it's typically a symmetric window. Doesn't have to be, but that's what we usually use. So um, this is our endpoint window. Here I've shown it as kind of a triangular window. And uh, we use this window to basically select a piece of the signal x of n to process. And we're specifically selecting um, that piece between 0 and n minus 1. Now the frequency that we're calculating the output at is called omega k, and this is a discrete time frequency. If we're using an FFT to calculate this, then we can calculate what that frequency omega k is. It's 2 pi k over big K, and this assumes that we're using a, um, a k point, big K point, FFT to do the calculation. So we use a big K point FFT um, and we're just taking the kth bin, uh, the kth point in that resulting transform. And so that's what we're doing with a windowed Fourier transform. We multiply the data by a window, W of n, and then we calculate the Fourier transform as usual. Um, we use a finite length window that's n points long, and if we're using an FFT to calculate it, um, we get frequency samples at 2 pi k over k, um, where little k is the, the index and, and big K is the size of the FFT. So now I said we could somehow relate this um, to uh, the output of a filter, and so let's see how we do that. So let's consider processing the signal x of n with a discrete time, linear time invariant filter that I've called hk of n, and I've just defined it as being w of minus n, so that's that window we used before, and times e to the j omega k n. All right, so a couple things to notice. This is a non-causal filter. because um, w of n, remember, was defined from 0 to n minus 1. So w of minus n is going to be defined whoops, from, uh, from minus n minus 1 to 0. So it's a non-causal filter. And what you see here is that we're multiplying by a modulation factor, e to the j omega k n. And what that does is it's going to shift the frequency response of this filter so that it's concentrated around the frequency of interest, omega k. So now let's see if we can make um, the output of this filter look like the output of that windowed transform. So to compute the output of the filter, we just use convolution. So we convolve um, x of n with hk of n to get the output. And I've called the output here y of n. Okay. So um, we're going to calculate the convolution. Well, that's easy to do. We can write the equation for it. y of n is just going to be the sum over l, x of l, I'm using l as my convolution variable, um, times hk of n minus l. Okay, so I've, um, I'm leaving x alone and I'm flipping and shifting um, the filter. So if I do that, I can just substitute in my equation for hk. I get x of l. Now this will be w of minus 
quantity n minus L, just substituting in the equation for hk, and e to the j omega k n minus L. All right, that looks like a pretty simple formula. Let's consider calculating the output at time 0. So if we do that, we just substitute in n is equal to 0, and we get the sum over L, x of L, w of now um, n goes to 0 in both these places. So I get w of minus minus L, which is just w of L, and e to the minus j omega k L. We easily recognize this as being equal to x w of e to the j omega k. So we've proven what we set out to do. The output of the filter at time 0 is simply equal to the output of that windowed transform that we took on the previous page. So let's summarize this. All right, we've shown that the windowed transform is equivalent basically to a bandpass filter. Um, and so we could either take the data x of n and run it through multiplying by a window and take a k-point FFT and take one of those frequency bins to get x w of omega k. Or we could take the data and run it through a filter, h k of n, which is a non-causal LTI system, and get out the output at a single time point, and these two are equal. Now this interpretation is especially useful for understanding spectral analysis. Let's see why. All right, if we just consider our, our simplest window, which is just a rectangular window of n points long, the filter that we have is in the time domain w of n e to the j omega k n. So what does h k of e to the j omega look like? What does the filter frequency response look like? Well, we're just, we can use our Fourier transform properties here. We're just multiplying these two, and we're multiplying by a complex exponential. So we can easily write what hk of e to the j omega is going to be equal to, and that will be equal to w of e to the j omega minus, oops, omega k. So all we've done is shifted the Fourier transform of the window to a point surrounding omega k. So we could sketch that. Frequency response h of e to the j hk of e to the j omega will look like the Fourier transform of a rectangular window, which is quite familiar to all of us. But now we've recentered it around omega k. So we can see this bandpass filter um, will tend to pass frequencies around omega k. The width of the set of frequencies it will pass is determined by the length of that rectangular window. Um, but it will also take in some, uh, some energy from signals outside that band, and that the amount of that will be determined by the height of these side lobes, which again are well known for the rectangular window. So this was the frequency, uh, the filter bank interpretation of a windowed Fourier transform. It's quite useful in spectral analysis, and it's a good thing to remember. So that concludes our video. It was made for a DSP course at George Mason University. If you're at all interested in more info about GMU or um, the School of Engineering or our ECE department, check out these websites. Thanks for listening.